Welcome to part one of working with the console within Studio One Three. Now the mix console is where we can adjust the volume balance of our tracks as well as the frequencies of our tracks and add any effects we'd like to use such as reverb, delay, compression, etc. And we can access the console by clicking mix there or by pressing F3 on our keyboard. I'm actually going to F5 and close out the browser. Now in this video we're basically going to cover the features of the console and how to get around and move around. Uh, this isn't a tutorial on mixing your song so we just want to learn what the tools are within the console that will allow us to do that. Now to start uh, we want to be aware that there are several types of channels that we can work with within the console and these include audio channels, instrument, input, output, bus, and effects channels. And let's go ahead and create some of these so we can then take a look at some of the features that are available to us. I'm going to press T on the keyboard and I'm going to choose audio and our count is two. Track one is fine and we've got mono, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then as you can see in the arrange view we have two tracks that have been created and then two corresponding channels within our console. I'm going to press T again. This time I want to choose instrument. I'm going to change this to instrument one. Two counts is fine. I'll choose OK. And then this time we do have two tracks that have been created in the arrange view up above here, but nothing's been created in the console. And this is because in instrument tracks don't have anything to do with the console per se. They're basically containers for our MIDI data so that we can store our MIDI recording there and edit it um, if we'd like to do so. It isn't until we actually add VST instruments that we then have our instrument tracks show up. So if I F5, I'll F3 and close out the console, come to instruments here and I will bring in a my tie and put this on the first one. Close that out and then I'll put a mojito on the second one. Close out our browser, open up the console again, and now you can see we have two channels that have been added for our instrument tracks. For the other tracks that I mentioned, um, we've got bus and effects channels. We can right click in an empty space here. We could also right click on a channel, um, but I'm going to right click here and choose add bus channel. And when this loads, it's going to expand this panel out. We can add our inserts and sends there. I'm going to click this arrow to close it though, or right click, and then add an effects channel. Another way of adding these is that we could say if we had a group of drum tracks, we could select the first one, hold down shift, and then while both of these are selected, right click, and then add bus for the selected channels and then those will be routed automatically to that second bus. I'm going to remove and then these go back to main out. Now there are two other channels that we've talked about and they are the input and output channels. In order to access those we come over to the far left here and I choose inputs. These are going to correspond directly to the physical inputs on your audio uh, device. Now I have a Focusrite Scarlet Solo which has two ins and two outs. So here I have two solo inputs and one stereo. It's not showing Scarlet Solo because I'm using a virtual mixer kind of to sit in between Studio One 3 and my audio interface. I have to do this in order to create the tutorials and capture the ASIO audio. Um, but just know that this is how you would access your input channels. You can monitor your levels when you're recording your audio in. And if you're someone who likes to add compression to the audio as it's being recorded, we can double click on an input 
and then come to the inserts here and add that compression or limiter, whatever you like to uh, add to your audio. And we'll go ahead and deselect the inputs to get rid of that. Here we have outputs. And if I click this for my situation, nothing's going to happen because I only have two outs set up. And uh, we do have a little bar that shows up here. So if I click the output again, you'll notice that this goes away. If you have an audio interface with multiple outs set up and active within your audio IO settings, then you're going to get those sub outs show up here. And each of the sub outs as well as the main out has their own discrete metronome control. So you can control that for each one if you'd like to have a click track on the main or not but you want to have it on your sub outs, you can turn it on on the sub outs and turn it off here. And each one of your outs is going to have a control, level control for your click track as well. That's going to adjust them separately. Just to briefly take a look at the audio IO setup so you can have a better idea of what I'm talking about. If you're new to Studio One and you're just getting started, I, by clicking on the sample right here, we come to our song setup. If we click the audio IO setup, then you can see this is where you can make your uh, physical audio inputs active or unactive here. And th these represent my virtual mixer that I have for the screen capture. Um, so if I were to click more of these and then click on the inputs, then those would show up here as well beyond these uh, three here. I'll go ahead and cancel out of there. Now when you're creating these channels within the console, it can maybe seem a little bit intimidating and you may get lost in it. One thing to help uh, kind of find your way around here is to take note that the instrument channels and the audio channels have a similar color here. The effects and bus have a darker gray tone here. That is if you haven't gone in and made your own adjustments to the color scheme. Um, also at the very bottom we have icons that are going to help you pinpoint what you're working with. So these icons represent the instrument tracks. These icons are going to represent your audio tracks and then we have effects. And then this one is represents your bus tracks. Now each of these different types of channels that we're talking about are going to have sim some similar features. And let's take a look at those. At the very top here we're going to have our input selection. And for our instrument channels we're going to have the name of the instrument that's tied to that channel. And if we click on this, then we're going to open up that instrument. For the audio channels, if we click here, then we can choose a different input from our audio interface. We could actually also open up or access our audio IO setup as well. For the effects and bus channels, uh, nothing's going to happen right now because I don't have anything routed to these. But I do want to mention if you notice these dashes, these will give you a visual representation of how many different channels are being sent to these. So if I let's send, and this leads to the next one actually, we're getting ahead, but below the input sections we have the output control. And by default they're all going to go to the main out. But we can click and choose to send that to, I'll send this to effects one. And you notice we have a dash there. I'll send the second instrument channel to effects one. We now have another dash there. And for the audio channels, I will send these to the bus one and the second one to bus one. You can see we now have these two dashes. And we can now click here and we have our two instruments. We can choose from one of those. If I click, then it's going to highlight that channel and expand out control for the panel where we can add our inserts and sends. If I click this arrow, we can close. We can also double click and close that down. So we routed our two audio channels here to the bus one. So if I click here, we can see our two audio channels here. And the same for the instrument channels. If I click one of these, it's going to highlight that and expand out 
the panel here where we can access our inserts and sends. So this is how we open up that panel if we're clicking directly on the channel. For the audio channels and instrument channels, we have inserts and sends. For the effects, we only have inserts. And for the buses, we have inserts and sends. Next in line, we have panning. And we can just grab this little dash here and move to the left or right. Studio One uses a minus 3 dB pan law. And um, beyond dragging to control what's going on in the stereo field here, we could also click here and enter in a value. Next, we have our fader. We can drag vertically. And we could also click here and enter in a numeric value. For both of these, if we make an adjustment, we'd like to go back to the default. We can control click to return those back to 0 dB or center for pan. Next we have mute and we can just click to activate that mute. We could also press M on our keyboard and below that we have solo. We could press solo on the keyboard or click. You can, if you notice this one here it has a green solo and this is saved so no matter what this is always going to be soloed. Um, to turn this on or turn it off, we want to hold down control and click. Actually, I'm lying to you. You want to hold down shift and click. And then now the it uh, behaves normally. So if I want to turn that back on so that it always remains soloed no matter what, I'll hold down shift and click. And now it's always going to be soloed. Even if I click on it, it's going to be soloed even come into the global solo. So I'll hold down shift and turn that back off. If we solo multiple channels, we can hold down control and click just one of them to turn them all off. If I hold down control and then click on that solo again, it's going to reactivate all of the multiple solos that you had on before you did that. So if I hold down control and click, it turns them both back on. And this behavior applies also to the global solo and mute up above here as well. So if I click on the on this global solo, I don't even have to hold down control. I can click that again and you can see it activates both of those. Next we have record arm and we can just click that if we want to monitor our signal coming in. Uh, we could also press U on our keyboard. Below that we have record arm. If I press R on my keyboard, it will arm. We could also click. And then at the very bottom here we have control for the automation mode. By default this is going to be off, but if we click once, we can then access read, touch, latch, or write. We can also click here and add or remove parameters. Now I do have a full video on using automation within Studio One 3, so if you'd like to learn more about that, just go ahead and click the link up above here. Below the automation mode control, we have the track name, and we can double click and enter in a new name. We can also click once to change the color of our channel, and then that's reflected here on our track as well. If we click all the way to the left where this is showing red, we can access that color palette there as well and change the color up on our track also. And I think we'll stop here for part one of working with the console, and I will see you in part two.